Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil. There are many documentaries that examine the questions surrounding the events of 9-11. This film is different in the sense that it presents data that conclusively proves the official story to be a farce. Citizen Investigation Team is dedicated to actual on-site field research and has started this quest in Arlington, Virginia in order to shed some light on the details as they happened at the Pentagon. This investigation has uncovered a smoking gun showing beyond a reasonable doubt that the plane could not have toppled the light poles and caused the damage to the building as outlined in the building performance report by the American Society of Civil Engineers. The evidence is based primarily on eyewitness accounts to the event. Visit our website at thepentacon.com to view our thorough analysis of all details surrounding the Pentagon attack in the researchers edition of this film that includes many more eyewitness accounts and much more information. This smoking gun version will focus only on the specific accounts that ultimately prove the official story to be false. We also encourage you to look into the analysis of Flight 77's flight data recorder as presented by our brother organization, Pilots for 9-11 Truth, in their documentary, Pandora's Black Box, Chapters 1 and 2. Please visit their website at pilotsfor911truth.org. Most of the accounts we will present were filmed at what used to be the Sicko gas station, which is the closest building to the side of the Pentagon where the catastrophic event transpired. These witnesses had a better view of the final seconds of the flight path before the beginning of the physical damage than any other eyewitnesses. Their claim is quite simple. They all definitively placed the plane on the north side of the station. According to the official story, this would be impossible because of the direction of the top of light poles and the physical damage to the building. It has been established definitively by all researchers and official reports that if the plane hit the building, it had to have flown on the south side of the station in a trajectory traveling from the southwest. There is zero room for error in this regard. Here is a clip from the 9-11 Commission showing an animation they provided officially demonstrating this. The following is a time-lapse depiction of the flight path of American 77.
The ASCE report is also conclusive in this regard. The following images demonstrate this fact. This film will present on the record testimony from the eyewitnesses who were in the best position possible to determine the final moments of the flight path. All of their accounts corroborate each other, but contradict the official reports and the physical damage 100%. Many of you may be thinking, but eyewitnesses are unreliable. Although this may be the case in many scenarios, there are quite a few things that make this testimony particularly credible and strong. One, the high level of corroboration from independent accounts. We will present four separate accounts all corroborating each other while not being contradicted by a single other witness in the entire investigative body of evidence. Two, the simple right or left nature of their claim. The only thing they have to recall is what side of the building the plane flew. Three, the perfect vantage point. No other witnesses were in a better position to tell on what side the station the plane flew than the witnesses that were on the station's property. Four, the high level of credibility of the witnesses themselves. Two of the four are Pentagon police officers. Five, the fact that their testimony was filmed on location. This leaves zero room for misinterpretation of their claims as they are able to reenact their experience for the camera. Six, the extreme magnitude of the event being something that is virtually impossible to forget. Number six is an important one. Ask yourself where you were on 9-11. Virtually everyone remembers in detail where they were, what they did, and how they felt on that day. Now imagine you were on the Sitco gas station property, just tens of feet away from the plane with a perfect view of the Pentagon. Does it seem feasible that you could be completely mistaken as to what side of the station the plane flew? Regardless of how you answer that question, none of the witnesses we spoke with believe there is a remote possibility they could be mistaken in this regard. Of the four witnesses we will present, three were on or right near the Sitco gas station property. The fourth is Edward Pake, an auto mechanic that was up the street at his shop on Columbia Pike, just in front of the Sheridan Hotel. Although Edward did not have a view of the Pentagon, he got a great view of the plane and places it as having crossed over to the north side of Columbia Pike just before passing over the Navy Annex. This is where the flight path seriously diverges from the official story which requires the plane to remain on the south side of Columbia Pike at all times. Here's what Edward had to say. Was it straight up Columbia Pike or more towards 395? Oh, okay. So not straight up Columbia Pike, more, more over the... Uh... I see. Coming from this way. Uh huh. And then uh, at the time inside the, uh, I just, I saw the uh, big, looks like a big black wing. Black wings? Yeah, kind of a uh, very lower. Looks like it uh, almost hit my head. So, oops. Oh. <laughs> I just had it this way. How high was the plane when it was in front of you? Uh, I almost hit, uh, I thought at the time as an airplane hit the my uh, my roof, my building in roof, hit the, this roof, that then much lower. Oh, you thought it almost hit the roof over here? Yeah, looks like it hit. Okay, so it seemed like you all, it almost hit these roofs over here. Yeah. So when you saw it fly, it was coming from coming from, from like this way. Mm -hmm. coming from there to mm -hmm. this way. Okay. And then at the time, feeling it looks like it almost hit my roof. Then much lower. You know the uh, airplanes uh, uh, body size here, and then the wing, the wing this much. Mm -hmm. and I saw the only one. The kind of the uh, body size is uh, over the building, and the wing is this way. Oh, oh, so you're saying the body was over the building? Yeah, the, this way. Oh. The little over here. Oh, okay. So the wings were over the over the here. Wing is here. Uh, everything was on this side of the road then. Yeah. This side of Columbia Pike. Yeah, Columbia Pike. So wing is the, the body, the turnover body here. Okay. 
Body's there, okay. Maybe over the road. Oh, over the road. Oh, okay. That's that's the little direction. I see. And and so you're saying it was just barely over over the buildings. That's how high it was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What I want you to do here is draw on these pictures the way that you saw the plane come. Okay. Here's these two pictures. Hold this for a second. I'll, t I'll hold this. And so you can see there's your shop here. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's the shop. So if you can if you can draw for me basically, you know, if you saw the plane come over here or over here. Okay. Basically yeah. where where you saw the plane. So see like this? The, the Columbia Pike this one. Yeah. And then Yeah. Airplane is a Okay. Yeah. We cross this street, but little this way, not right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Going, going this way. Oh, okay. See? Yeah. And then the right there. Yes. yes. Not that this side. Correct. Correct. So that's why the direction. If I say like that, hold the can I hit the pentagon? Uh, this side. Well, you know, it could have, it could have gone this way or maybe turned. I don't know. But you saw yeah, yeah. the plane. This one, I saw the, I saw the inside here, mm -hmm. and then airplane coming. Okay. And um, next, next one. Yeah. Next picture. Your next picture. Okay. From from what you gathered, because obviously you couldn't see the Navy annex. Yeah. So I looks like the uh, my shot here. See, it looks like my shot here. Just like, 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 uh, Navy and its building is not. It wasn't touched. Yeah, it wasn't touched. Oh, then what? And then I keep uh, uh, running to the uh, uh, Pentagon side. And then I saw the, uh, uh, the uh, kind of a black and then orange colors. This black smoke and the orange color too. Uh, 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 okay, so now back to the plane and, and your description of it. You're saying that. All you really notice or remember are black wings. Yeah, black wing, and then one the kind of a, the. Uh... Okay, let me let me. I have a, uh, pictures of planes I want to show you as well. The same, 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 same. Airplane. Well, these are different. This this is the same style airplane. Yeah. That they say it was. That's what I thought you were kind of one, one. Okay, let me see. Let me gray, show. One, uh, black and gray. So one. Black and gray? Yeah, black. And then there's uh, one, the uh, top down gray. Uh, uh, black. I think uh, this one is a. Uh, but you saw one engine like that or two engines like that? Yeah, I, I saw the uh, not the two engines. Yeah. Not two engines. Yeah. Okay. It's one engine. Because they saw other. They say there were other planes in the area, Edward that people saw. One was just like this one right here. No, no. Uh, that was just supposedly following the plane. Did you see more than one plane? or, or just no, only one. Only one? Yeah, only one. No other planes? Yeah. Okay, because other people said they saw two. No, no. There were reports that a plane just like this, C-130 with two engines. No, no. But that's not what you saw. This one is a house. You know the house, big, big airplane? Yes. Yeah. This one, that much lower, uh -huh. the kind of the old ground, Vibration, right? The jet sound. But, but you did, so you did not see more than one. Never, never there. Only never one. That. Only one. The whole time. Only one. The whole time. It looks like the uh, kind of shoom. Uh -huh. And then I saw the uh, kind of a feeling break, but the kind of a one round one is through uh, this way. So yeah. the wings look back up black underneath, uh, and the color, and you say the the plane itself look gray. Yeah, it's kind of a gray, not black, completely black, kind of a dark gray. Yeah? A dark gray. Yeah, that's why the oh. 
kind of an airport. Oh, yeah, airport. Sound is a uh, jet sound. Right. So the ring sound is this uh, sound. And the body side is this sound. Edward's account is quite damaging to the official story. If the plane were to pass on the south side of the station, on its way to top of the light poles, and damage the building, there is no way it could have crossed over Columbia Pike while traveling at over 500 miles per hour. His account contradicts the animation presented in the 9-11 Commission report. Let's take a look at that one more time. While we fully understood the importance of Edwards' testimony when we first heard it, we knew it was important to see if his claim could be corroborated or refuted. So we moved up the street to the Sicko gas station. Here we talked with the manager who told us about Robert Tercios, an employee that saw the plane. Please note that the fact that Robert Tercios was at work on 9-11 and was an eyewitness to the plane has been confirmed by his own manager and is officially on record with the station's payroll. Because of this, there is confirmed documented proof that he was at the station and saw the plane on that day. Here is how Robert describes what he experienced. I had just come out to uh, do the pump maintenance that morning, you know, taking out the old water, replacing the paper towels, whatnot. I had my cart over here, and I, when I, I heard the loud uh, engine sound, you know, like, we normally get flybys, from the airplanes, but it was louder than that. So, you know, I started looking where it was coming from. So, you know, just looking around and I saw uh, in the airplane come down here over the tree. Okay, let's see. Let's see where you say it was coming down. We're, we're on the south side of Sicko Station. Robert says he saw it came down, come down over here on the north side. Is that right, Robert? That's correct. It was um, to my, uh, I saw it come right over the top of that tree there, next to the corner of the canopy. Next to the corner of the canopy. So it came between those two trees? Yes, to, that's what I recollect. Okay. Um, it seemed to be very, very low to the ground. It, it, I thought it was gonna let, uh, hit the floor, the street here, the ramp. But, uh, you know, so I ran out here to this mound to see, you know, see if I could see what was gonna happen. Uh, but so let's go over there. Just out here. Where were you exactly? You were right there, but the mound was a lot smaller, huh? Yeah, lot you have smaller. some pictures of that. Why don't, why don't we get to grab those pictures? Can you show us some pictures of how the mound was, Robert? Well, this is... Uh, Sorry, look back then, like back then. Okay, let me zoom in on that. It was not completed as you see it now. Right. It was uh, a little bit shorter. Right. So I could see a little bit more than now. Uh, but in fact, let's go up on the mountain so we can get a bit better view of what you actually saw. Okay, so there we go. That's the Pentagon. Okay, um, Pretty close view of where the impact point was. Now, Robert, when you ran up to the mound, you saw the plane fly through um, between these two trees. What happened after that? Well, as I say, um, what I saw was a, a gray plane. Uh, uh, I couldn't exactly tell what it was I mean it was uh, you know couldn't tell the markings on the side of it just you know, did you see any markings at all no I don't remember seeing any markings okay on it. It, was it was gray. just it was, was it like a, a bright gray or a dull gray uh, kind of bright kind of bright yes it is not as you know it was more of a silver gray kind of okay but uh, it was so you know kind of quick maybe two seconds when I saw just uh, swoop down here and uh, you know, I tried to follow it and I saw it uh, lift up a little bit to get over to the, to the side of the bridge here. To the side of the bridge? Yes, where you see the, the do not enter sign. Seems seem to be that way. Um, okay, so 
case, you're talking about the, uh, the do not enter sign. Oh, I see. Okay, it's a B. he's talking about do not enter sign right there. Okay, so on the billboard. Right there. So it flew up to go over that. Yes, it, uh, okay. And and then I, I, my view was, you know, I could not totally see when it hit the Pentagon. All I see is, uh, all I saw was it headed straight to it. And uh, then the big uh, explosion, just a fireball and lots of smoke. Okay, did you see it actually? So you didn't see it hit the Pentagon? No, the view is not as, it was obstructed still. I could only see the the fireball did from you the see, explosion. Did you see it uh, hit any light poles? No, I I may have missed that. I just saw it pick up, just to make, you know. You saw it pick up to miss that, yeah. rather than hit any light poles. Did you see it fly over the Pentagon? Fly over the yeah. Pentagon? No, uh, the only thing I saw was when it was a direct, uh, you know, direct line to, to go into the Pentagon. Okay, but Colli you didn't see it Collided. Hit. Um, no, I did not. Because there know. were other planes as well. Uh, some people say a gray plane flew over the Pentagon that was following it. But you didn't see that? No, I did not see any other planes. I just... No. Okay. Did you see any windows on the plane? No, I don't. Did you I notice how many engines it had? I, I could see the one from my side, the big turbine engine, you know, on the wing. <laughs> okay, just one. Okay, now here we are on the north side of the Sitco station, of the Navy Annex station, or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Navy Exchange. Navy Exchange, yeah. right, okay. And um, so now, you pretty much, this is exactly where you saw the plane fly fly by, right? Oh, yes. Pretty, Can you point for me how you saw it come? Well, I would say uh, it seemed to be just over the canopy here, just over the corner of this canopy. This okay. Side. So just over the corner of that yes, canopy. Over the corner of the canopy, as I as I said before, it seemed to me it seemed like it was going to crash onto the the street here, but it but it did. Uh, I saw it lift, take a go up a little bit, headed towards the Pentagon. It looked like it was going to crash in the street, but then yeah. it picked up a little bit. Yes. And um, as far as how it came over this corner. Was it more like the wing or or the body? Was the left wing, the right wing, or the the actual body? Oh no, it was plane? more like the right wing headed. The, it was the right wing. So yes. you'd say most of the plane was even further north for, of the station. Yes, for maybe I would say over the tree here behind me. Okay, so it kind of flew right over that tree. Yes, I see. All right, now I gave you this piece of paper yesterday to draw a flight path on. That that's your drawing, correct? Yes. Well, that's correct. Okay, I want you to show that to the um, to the camera too. This is the drawing you made of the flight path. Okay, as I was saying to Robert, the official story says that the plane came on the south side of the Sitco and hit the light poles and then went on to the Pentagon. Um, Robert, how certain are you that the plane came on the north side of the station as opposed to the south side? I am 100% um, sure that it, what I saw is the plane come out from this corner of the canopy, over this side of the canopy. Uh, and did the plane look like an American Airlines jet to you? All I saw was a silver colored uh, airplane. I, I could not. Uh, it was a very quick, uh, let's say about two seconds when I saw it. Then I lost uh, sight of it behind the mound. That's when I ran out. And okay. And then it was already gone? Yeah. It was, well, it was, I saw it pick up a little bit. Oh, okay. I saw the back side from that. You know, I could not see any markings on that side by that. Uh huh. So. Right, I see. So, you saw it, when you ran up to the mound is when you saw it pick up a bit? Yes. Okay. But you're, uh, without a doubt, it was on this side of the station, on, uh, on the north side of the sure. station. I'm certain that it was on the side of the station. 
Okay. Excellent. Robert, you said that the plane looked silver, but then you said it looked like the color of this car right here. So it wasn't a super shiny silver. Now, that's an American Airlines jet. Um, that There's a color of this silver, and there's that silver. This is with the sun on it, and this is with the sun behind it. And then we have a, a dull gray military jet here. Another one here. This is a C-130. Is it, Did you see one like this? Uh, no, it would have a turbine engine just like this. It had tur a turbine engine. Yeah. Here, let me take that. Jet. Okay, jet engines. Jet engines. Like that. Right, so it did. It was single jet engines, turbine engines. Now, look at this. Uh, you said, uh, take a look at this last one. Here's other people said they saw a white jet like that. Would you say the jet you saw looked exactly like this American Airlines silver jet? Or more like this white jet right here? To me, it seemed, it seemed silver. It did not seem white. So it, I, I did not see the markings on the side, but it, the color is it, more like that. Was it just like that? or, 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 it or? Was, uh, I, I, couldn't, I, would not, I cannot say it was exactly like this. It, it, to me, it seemed uh, not as white as this, but it did not seem this silver at me. It seemed like a little bit more gray than silver. It's just somewhere in between this two. Robert's account is earth shattering. He corroborates Edward's account and definitively places the plane on the north side of the gas station, proving the official story of fabrication. What's also quite notable about Robert's account is the fact that he actually saw the plane pull up to miss the street sign and light poles. Virtually his entire account contradicts the official story other than the fact that he still believes the plane hit the building. However, this is impossible if the plane was actually on the north side of the gas station and pulled up, as he claims. Although Edward and Robert's testimony is strong corroborated evidence that the plane could not be what caused the physical damage, the next two accounts we present leave no doubt that they are remembering accurately. Sergeant Chadwick Brooks and Sergeant William Legassi of the Pentagon Police Department were also on the Seiko Station property on 9-11. As police officers on duty, there is also proof they were actually at the location on 9-11. Particularly in the case of William Legassi, who is visible in the Seiko security camera video of that day. Let's watch as both of these fine officers describe what they witnessed. Okay, it's November 7th, 2006, Election Day. I'm here once again at what used to be the Sitco Station, now called the Navy Exchange. And we're talking with Sergeant Chadwick Brooks, correct? Correct. All right, Sergeant Brooks, you saw the plane on 9-11, isn't that right? Correct, that's correct. Okay. Um, can you please give me basically just your story and what you saw on that day? Sure. Uh, during that time of 9-11, I was currently assigned to the patrol uh, division of the Pentagon Police. And prior to uh, around 0900, we were dispersed from our meeting because there was an uh, accident in New York. Uh, we were told to uh, continue to uh, go out and conduct uh, uh, our patrols here. So what had happened on the morning of 9-11 was I'd come over here to um, Sitco Station, which is now the Navy Exchange, to fuel up my patrol car. Where were you fueling your car? Uh, right here. Uh, where that gentleman is at right now, on the field right there, on the very end. Oh, okay. So on the, the far right? The far right. The far right right. Okay. And after the fuel here, I had pulled over because I wanted to uh, conduct my uh, patrol sheets. I wanted to get my paperwork done. Where'd you pull over? Uh, right here. Okay, were your cars right now? Correct. Okay. But instead of doing that, I figured I didn't want to block traffic because the barrier, this barrier right here, wasn't uh, located at the time. Okay. So I wanted to kind of get a neutral spot away from the traffic and away from everybody. Uh huh. And as I was getting in my patrol car to go directly across the street, which you'll see is FOB2 uh, lot 6. That's lot 6, which is the bottom parking lot here. Can you do me a favor? Can we continue this interview? from across the street where you were when you saw the plane? Sure. Okay, let's move over there. Okay. Okay, Sergeant Brooks, so this is exactly where you were standing on um, when you got out of the car. Right. And you witnessed at this point the plane 
fly over the station right. and, and move on towards the Pentagon. Right. Okay, now, yeah, go ahead. Well, well, first of all, I wanted to ask you, what side of the station did you see the plane fly over? Okay, actually, from the front of the station, from the front of the station, exactly where we were at earlier, where the yellow uh, Jersey barrier. Okay, was it more on the, uh, when we were facing the station, more on the north side or to the left? No, it was more to the left. More to the left, okay. And was the plane, the entire plane to the left of the station, or maybe portion of it over the, um, the canopy of the station? No, it was more towards the left. It was, the entire plane was to the left station, the wing and everything. Correct. Okay, and how, how high over the station was it? I tell you, it was pretty low. Um, I always tell people it's almost like if you had a penny, you could almost just throw it up. It really seemed close, but... Um, directly, see where the uh, telephone pole is? Telephone pole. It was up higher. It was up way higher than that. It was just... Oh, okay. It was just unbelievable. Okay, um, okay. Close up. All right. And, and so, when you were standing here, did you see it pass over the, the station at that point? Correct. Right. During okay. this point right here, we uh -huh. were able to see everything. We were okay. able to see everything. Right. When that plane came to see across here... Okay, so it came, it came from... Up over here. Is it where the trees are at? Yeah. Uh huh. It, and it was descending. Correct. It was descending. By then, it had already been descending. Okay, it was so. It's basically doing a, a, a straight line. It's a straight line that was depending on. By sure. then, it was actually in route, and it was a straight line. So you just jumped out of your car and, and were just, watch, just, just to watch it fly over the station? Yeah, we were basically, by then, we were calling on the radio. We were saying, you know, dispatch, there's a plane hit it through. The Pentagon as a plane hit it towards the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. But by then, I wasn't able to go through. I wasn't able to transmit. Uh, Sergeant Roberts at that time was actually in patrol too. He was the actual officer that was able to get to get through the communications. I know by then people were calling dispatch via their cell phone, but he was actually calling on the air. And I just just heard on a loud voice saying, "There's a plane dispatch. There's a plane coming towards the Pentagon." Sure. At that time. Okay, so you're standing right here. Now, obviously, you got a pretty good view of the Pentagon. Let me let me zoom on sure. on the Pentagon real quick. Let's let's see how that's that's the impact point right there. As you see, that's the impact point. And as you see right now, anybody standing at this current location where I'm at can actually see that uh, straight on right there. Now, you this, see, there was nothing blocking. There was actually nothing blocking at that time. So there was a straight shot. Okay, now th there's the do not enter sign that uh, uh, Robert Tercios was talking about earlier. Okay, so when you're standing right here, come back in the, in the field of vision for me, Sergeant Brooks, if you would, thank you. Now, when you're standing right here looking towards the Pentagon and you saw the plane in a rapid descent after it uh, passed the station on the north side of the Sitco station, uh, what did you see? Okay, what I seen then was the plane going directly in front of the building. And what seemed to be a quick second, we just seen a boom and everything just a great ball of... Uh, fire just goes straight up in the air and it's just right on the impact just we're, a great ball of fire were you able to literally visual or actually see the plane impact the building correct from this location mm -hmm. where i'm standing now mm -hmm. directly turning around and watching that plane literally go into the pentagon which is currently located over there right directly okay and did you see it hit any light poles no, we didn't see it hit any light poles. Okay. But of course, uh, the trees and everything else was kind of, everything was kind of blowing back and forth here, I guess because of the, you know, the altitude of the plane and, and the velocity of the plane. Um, everything kind of be, seemed to kind of be blowing. Sure. Okay, now, can you, can you describe the plane for me? It's a big plane. Um, I don't know if it was a 737. I'm assuming it was a 737. It's a fairly large plane. Um, I guess it was one that carried a lot of passengers. It was not one of those small Cessnas that everybody was saying. It was not one of those uh, medium planes. A very large plane, which uh, I'm pretty sure was accommodating a lot of personnel. Did you see any other planes? There was a report of a C-130 in the area that was following it. At that time, the only thing I seen was the plane that actually hit the Pentagon. I did not see uh, any other plane. What color did the plane look to you? It's more like a, a champagne type, almost like the, the movement. 
you're looking at, that's right there. Okay, so you're saying to you it, it, it looked quite similar to that booth right there. Right. So kind of like an off-white. Off-white, right. It was like an off-white. And did you notice any uh, colors or markings on it? Uh, I don't recall. I know probably, I think it was United. I believe it was United. Um, that was the only markings I've seen. Well, what do you mean? You saw, well, how, what, how, what type of United markings? What did you see? Uh, just a regular logo. That looked like? Um, it was in blue letters. United. You saw yeah. blue United letters. Um, did you see any stripes on the on the plane? Um, I don't recall. Like I said, it's, it's everything happened so quick. It just happened. Uh, it happened so quick, right? Yeah, I glanced up and then turned around. So. Okay, we're talking with Sergeant William Legassi. We're still here at the Navy Exchange, what used to be the Sitco Station. We were looking at the Pentagon, right over this way. That's the point of impact. We're on the north side of the Sitco station right now. Sergeant Legassi, can you please just explain to me what you saw on 9-11? Sure. Um, basically, I was here refueling my vehicle. Um, had my door open. You were standing in that area right there? Well, I was actually standing here. Okay, okay. Now that I know that, why don't you come, come around here to the front of the car so I can see you better and hear you better. <coughs> All right, so I was standing by my door because I had the, uh, the lock on the fuel to just let it go without the dog. And I had a working dog in the back and I was talking to my working dog. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw something and turned to look at it. When I turned to look, right about here, um, I actually didn't hear it. Uh, I just it was by me. I'm sorry, you say you did not hear it? I did not hear it. Okay, can you come a little closer so I can hear you better? All right. That's good, that's good. All right, basically, I didn't actually hear the aircraft. I saw it first. Uh-huh. Um, heard it after it was going by me. Made the identification immediately as American Airlines. It's a bright silver. It's one of the only non-painted airliners, so it's pretty distinctive. No, I'm sorry, you said it was, oh, non-painted. Yeah, it wasn't painted. It was just aluminum. It was shiny. Okay. It had the, it had the uh, you know, the blue and red stripes on it, but the fuselage on those is usually just polished aluminum. Okay. So, I identified it right away as a, you know, American Airlines. Um, I have enough experience with aviation and aircraft that I can identify stuff pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the matter of time that it went from where I was to the building, you know, probably less than a second, I mean, but enough that I saw that there was no landing gear down, there was no flaps down, there was, you know, the window shades were shut because you couldn't see any difference. I mean, it was just white in the windows, which would indicate to me that the shades had been down. And it flew into the building with a uh, very slight, you know, you know uh, control movements. It played it lost substantially until it hit the building. And it kind of made a kind of slewed into the building, which I guess is indicative of hitting the building and then kind of, you know, smashing into it. I'm, I'm, can you describe it again? It did a what into the building? A yaw. Oh, okay. Uh, it moved on its yaw axis, meaning the tail. Instead of the plane just doing this, uh -huh. it kind of from here, it looked like the tail went in. Not It didn't hit at a 90 degree angle. It was not flush. It hit off center. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't like it went in this way. It kind of went in at an angle. And then it but but, it, but it, it only made that angle at the very last minute? Is that the very last second, rather? From my point of view, yeah. From your point of view, okay. And where did you see the plane coming from exactly? What direction? Did you see it approaching? Well, I saw it, like I said, from, if you look here, we're on the cemetery. Uh huh. Right about where those transformers are. Yeah. That's the first place I saw it because it was below. I mean, I was there, so a little bit different angle, but it was still below uh -huh. the roof line. That would have been below 100 feet AGL. So. Cleared all these lamp posts, or cleared all the light posts. So it was heading towards you, coming from Arlington Cemetery over there. No, 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 no. It was heading from left to right. It came from FOB2 area. So you're saying it was? Uh, it came from to the north side of the Navy annex, even? Yes. 
Okay, now, what so it did, what it did before, what I'm saying, what it did before uh -huh. those transformers, mm -hmm. I don't know, because that's the first place I really saw it was right mm -hmm. there. But it was not coming towards me. It was coming from left to right, or from east or from west to east, heading into the building that way. Um, so what it did before that point, uh, you know, who knows? I didn't see it. But from here down, I knew exactly what it did. Um, and as you notice, something else because I've spent a little bit of time on those websites. There's some eyewitnesses on 27 that were on the north end of 27. Well, you can see here. There's a row of trees. It's going to block the view of the aircraft from anybody that was on 27 that's heading southbound. So why there's so many of those witnesses making statements that are being validated, I have no idea. So you're saying most of the witnesses on 27 probably didn't see much? Unless they were coming this way. If they were coming from the Arlington side... They're only going to see the plane for a split second because the trees block the total approach. Oh, okay. So, but all the people blocked in traffic going towards Arlington Cemetery might have seen something. Sure. Oh, yeah. The people on 395 had a great view. Okay. Because 395 loops around here. Yeah. So anybody on 395 would have had a plane view. Okay. Now, when you saw the plane approaching the station, what? At what point of the? Where did it cross over the station? Can you, can it you, never crossed over the station. It never crossed over no. the station. I was here. Uh huh. Like I said. And Talk towards me. I can't hear you over there. It yeah. was almost. You know, I, when you think about things, you rethink them over and over and over. Uh huh. Things change. Uh huh. But because you just, you know, the heat of the moment. But after thinking about it, the plane was the wingtip was probably about. I want to say where that fence is, the boundary. Where, uh, where, where what fence is? See the stone fence? Oh, okay. The metal fence above it. That's probably as close this way as the plane got to me. Okay, let's see what fence he's talking about. He's talking about this fence way over here. Yeah, that would have been about the center line of the fuselage, right where that, that fence is. That's the center line of the fuselage. Yeah, so, so was, the, I want to say it was almost on that angle. If you could have... Drawing a line from the fuselage was probably right about there. Okay. So that would put, I don't know where <clears throat> where that would put the wingtip, but the first thing I did was I kind of flinched. Mm -hmm. um, and ducked into my car. And at the time, I mean, I don't know if it was a, a reaction, like a, a fear or whatever, but I ended up in my car because I called it in on the radio before I even left here. I mean, seconds. I mean, not even seconds elapsed, and I called it in on the radio. At that point, did you hear? Did you? Uh, were you hearing it? Well, yeah, you hear it after you pass. It, after it passed me. So it you was, didn't hear it until it passed you. Well, no. I mean, if the speed it was going. Again, the Doppler effect. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna hear a plane traveling at that speed before it gets to you. Um, okay, so basically, I mean, in. I think in, in your exchange with Dick Eastman, you mentioned that you, the plane came over the Navy annex. From that direction. Okay. That, I mean, that would that's what I would, the, the assumption I would make. So it wasn't directly on, over the Navy annex, as far as you could tell? Don't know. You didn't uh, see, it you came, didn't see. like I said, it came from that direction. <laughs> um, the biggest problem is, I mean, I know how a plane maneuvers. Mm -hmm. There's no way that thing was going, was off that heading by much before it got to here at that speed. Mm -hmm. So that's what I based my assessment on. Did it fly right over the Navy Annex? Did it have a wing over the Navy Annex? Did it almost hit the hotel? Those, I, I don't know, because I didn't see it. What but, I, okay, but as far as you can tell for sure, because that, that stone fence that we just zoomed in on over there is, is the fence to the Arlington National Cemetery. Yes. And as far as you could tell, um, the fuselage was over that. Yeah, that's, I mean, best guess, estimate, that's about where the fuselage is. And how high was it at that time? About 100, 150 feet AGO, above ground level. Okay, and, and kind of in a... Well, like, well I mean... You, I don't know, you're, you're here, so you can get a pretty good perspective. If I'm standing at my car door, there's the roof is here. Uh -huh. So if it was really high, it's going to be obstructed. If it was really low, it's going to be blocked by those trees or going to hit those trees. Mm -hmm. So if you draw a line from the tallest trees over there and kind of slope it down to the Pentagon, you can, you can kind of figure it out for yourself. It had to be between there, and it had to hit the Pentagon. So I would say about 100, 100, between 100 and 150 feet AGL. So, okay. 
Were, were you were, um, driving a car just like this, a plain white unmarked uh, police car? Exactly like it. Exactly like that. Exactly. And have you seen the release of the Sitco security video? No. Okay, because um, you can see your car in there. And, um, from what you recall, after, after um, you know, you saw the plane. Well, first off, let me ask you: Did you see the plane hit the building? Yes. Did I see what the plane did? No, because there was a big fireball. Um, when the plane hit, it just kind of disappeared. Like I said, it made that little yaw movement, and then it just disappeared. Did you see the plane pick up at all, maybe to, to make it over uh, anything before it, it, it no. went back down again? No. You didn't see it pick up at all? Okay. No. Did you see it hit any light poles? Did not see them hit the light poles, but obviously when I got to the scene, the light poles are down, you know... As fast as it was going, you can you can barely see the light poles from here. You know, I mean, if you look, they're the same color as the building almost. They're almost invisible. So the light poles that were struck are the ones on 27. You can clearly see the ones that are on the off ramps, but you can't see the ones that are on 27 except for the, the very top. Light pole one. Oh. Is right there. Okay, Sergeant Legazzi, I hope there wasn't too much trouble over there. Yeah. Um, I just have a, a couple more questions for you. At what point did you see the window shades pulled down, as you said in your ABC right interview? When, right when I looked at it. Right when you looked at it. I mean, now, how long was the period from when you first saw the plane as to when it impacted the Pentagon? I mean, it's right there. I'm looking at it. That fast. I mean, it's probably half a second. I mean, half a second? Look at it. It's here. 1,001, 1,000, maybe a second and a half from here to there. I mean, it's going, it's going as fast, if my hand's here, the aircraft, it's going that quick. Right. So it's not, you know, I saw it for about as long as I guess I could have seen it, maybe a second at the most. But, but um, you were still able to, to make it out. Uh, how soon were you able to make it out that it was Air, Air American Airlines? It's, Instantly, so. I mean, that's like what I was saying there. American Airlines is the only polished aluminum, you know, airline with the blue and red stripe, the big AA on the back. I mean, it wasn't, I've seen enough of them. I've been around aircraft my whole time, my whole life, basically. Um, it just immediately. Because if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, and I haven't heard this, I've never been proven to hear it, but I broadcast an American airliner just went into the building. Now, I've never heard those tapes. Uh, I think those tapes were used in the Sally trial, so they haven't been released. But uh, that's what I broadcast, if I remember correctly. Because I did it right after the plane was built. All right, now, how sure are you that the plane was to the north? coming from the north side of the Navy Annex. You're saying it was pretty much between the Navy Annex and Arlington Cemetery? Yeah. How right certain on. are you of that? 100%. Bet my life on it. 100%. Bet my life on it. Okay. Okay. Sergeant Legassi, was an incredible account. I think this is going to clear up a lot of things for a lot of people. I hope. <laughs> Um, I'm just, you know, it, it's kind of like this, you know, you can take all the data that we've given, um, and there's there's only one thing that's irrefutable that isn't me guesstimating. The fact is, American Airlines plane went from here in the building. Um, that's it. I mean, you can pick apart everything else because I don't have specifics on speed and altitude of our best guess estimates. I have no reason to lie. I have no reason to deceive anybody. How soon after you saw the plane fly over did you, did you, did you take off? Oh, I mean, I was, I mean, I had to be down there in a few seconds. So what did you do? Did you just kind of pull forward or did you back up? I threw the gas thing out of my car, hung it up, got in the car and went. I, as a matter of fact, I don't think I was as far forward. I was probably further back. Okay. Um, so do you think I perhaps? Think uh, there, do you think that perhaps you might have even been at this pump back here? I could 
bit. Okay. Because the more, the more I think about it, is this the first time I've, I've ever done an interview? Right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I really think I might have been back. You've been, been, been back on that one. I might have been back at that one. Okay. Well, I mean, the reason I say that is because when I left, I might have backed out. I don't think I drove forward. Okay. And the reason I'm asking you this is because you can see in the security video that your car was parked there and that you backed out and peeled off. So, you know, yeah, makes... I didn't, I've never sure. thought about that until just said. Sure. Because I remember <clears throat> I didn't go forward. Mm-hmm. That's the first time I ever thought about it. What I was trying to do really is just establish if that whether or not that was for sure you in the Sitco in, in the security video that was just recently released, and and that 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 establishes yeah, the first it. First time for certain. I ever thought of it because nobody ever asked me. Now, um, from what all, the other thing points I noticed from the video is that you pulled up and uh, walked over to an SUV parked right over there and talked to somebody. Yeah, it was uh, I think it was ERT guys. ERT guys. SWAT guys. SWAT guys. So they were already over there. Well, no, they were they were there, I guess, doing whatever. Yeah, just getting something. Whatever. Yeah. And, um, but the plane hadn't fly, flown over yet no. when you were talking to them. No. It didn't fly over to you, came back, started fueling up your car. And that, You know what? That is the first time I've actually had that recollection. That's where I parked my car. Because nobody, nobody's ever asked me. Sure. Yeah, no, it was five years yeah. ago. So... Uh, that's understandable. When you yeah, said, you did were... you back up? I'm like, yeah, I think I did. Now, you can see you back up and then you peel out really uh, fast. No kidding. That's pretty cool. Well, it's it's just nice to, I don't know. So when you when you went and talked to the SWAT guys, you weren't talking about the plane because it hadn't flown or fly no, over yet. No, what I think I told them was something around the fact that you guys see the tapes from New York. Ah, because I had just left the building. We were, uh, I was in what is, was, was our deputy chief's office, was an admin office, and we were watching the television of, uh, yeah, creepy, <laughs> but uh, watching the uh, television footage in New York. Sure. So you, when you saw the plane, you, you knew instantly what was going yeah, on, huh? I, I, you know, I was, I, it's still pretty surreal when you think about it. I mean, I'm just kind of, you know, that's, uh, the clarity now that day is coming back a lot more. I mean, okay, so now that it came back more, is there anything you told me that you think um, you might have just uh, deduced? No, I mean, like I said, the, the things that I'm, that aren't up for grabs, the plane was there, went to the building. The plane was Far to the north side of the station, did not pass over the station. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not like there was the shadow of a wingtip going over here. It was far enough out that I could see it because the, the one thing that, that made me realize what kind of plane it was, was being able to see both engines, you know, so it wasn't obscured at all. Oh, that reminds me. There are reports that a C-130, just like this one right here, yeah. was shadowing the plane. Didn't see it. You didn't see any, any other Never thing. saw it. I, I mean, obviously I know that it was in the area because I've read enough reports and I never saw it. Okay. Okay, I forgot to get you to draw draw the, where you saw the flight path coming, okay. Sergeant Legassi. I'm out of here. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, make that nice and thick for me. And obviously it's the wrong angle, but it kind of... Yeah, that, that's how you saw distance. it come. Yeah. Okay, one other question, Sergeant Legassi. You mentioned that in your previous accounts, you at one point said that the plane, uh, the vortex from the plane knocks you into the car. And in another account, you said that that didn't happen. Now, we know from our interview right here that you recalled things differently in the sense that you um, thought you were in this front pump, but you, you now you remember you're in the back pump. So everyone knows people's memories. Uh, you know, it's hard to recollect things sometimes. What's what's the reality about what happened as far as um, the the force the vortexes of the plane forcing you in the car? Well, you know the reason I know I said that is because I read that I said it, um, but I just remember being in the car after I saw the plane getting in the car, um, so I wasn't blown in by the vortex because I saw the plane going to the building, so I couldn't have been blown into the car if I watched it go to the building. So, so you really didn't feel. No, I didn't feel anything 
getting in the car. So I just remember I had to get in the car somehow, and I wasn't blown in. You weren't blown in. Did you feel the explosion? I felt the heat from the explosion. You felt the heat? Yeah. Did you feel vibration or anything? No. Okay. I feel the heat, though. Okay. Just want to clear that up. Thank you very much. Okay. Sergeant Brooks is going to draw for me on the image where he saw the plane fly. Now he's trying to assess the area again and um, recollect the way he saw it and then draw it right on that, on that um, piece of paper for me. He's it's looking. not about looking crazy, it's like Okay, absolutely. He's looking, he's going over here to the north side from where he remembers it flying. I want to get you actually drawing it if I could. No pressure, no pressure. Make that nice and thick for me. Want a thicker there? Yeah, sure. I think that's pretty close. That's that's damn near perfect from what I saw. And we've never, yeah, we've for the never, record, for the record, we've, we've never, never talked to each other about this at all. Matter of fact, um, it was only two people from that incident that I recall. Sergeant Roberts. Sergeant Roberts is uh, to this day the the only transmission on the radio. That's a, have you heard? Because I thought, um, and as I was discussing earlier, there's, in our there's interview, supposed so many. It was supposed to be me and Bright and then somebody else. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not saying that I, uh, I recall it was actually physically being here. Um, it was so to me, just the first transmission that I heard. Of. Are you are you sure, Sergeant Legacy, that you did trans uh, did report the American Airlines on the transmission, or is that something you just kind of? No, I mean, my well, wife my wife heard. It. Okay. My wife's a cop too, and she's in the building. That's what she heard. And that's what she told me she heard. So. Okay. So you guys, neither of you guys have even really talked about this yeah, with never, each other. Never, never talked. Never in all these five years, and you both independently drew the flight path line, pretty much exact. I know. I was. I, I mean, the way this has been going. You know, I was, who knew what he was going to put down there because he was in a different location a bit over. But it's right there, which makes me feel good about the way I remembered it. So, so you're both pretty much 100% certain that that's, that's what you remember the flight path from? different locations, yes. And, and again, like I said, I don't think it's going to be earlier, uh, there were so many officers trying to uh, dispatch, trying to call. Uh, they were trying to call in on their cell phones. Uh, but at the time, only one could actually get through um, um, on the transmission. So it just made it tough because everybody was calling me. Everybody was giving 100% to uh, trying to relay that important, what I consider the most important message probably. Um, I know in our, our work environment, now, just to let somebody know that you know, we're about to see what this house is. Now let me ask you this. This is going to sound kind of silly. What are the odds that both of you are mistaken as far as the fact that the plane was on this side of the station and that the plane actually came from the south side of the station? Uh, I tell you right now, <laughs> it, you can't say more than 100% because there's no way it was anywhere other than where I said it was. Yeah. What about you? Again, something like that, something of, of that magnitude. It's one thing seeing a vehicle uh, drive past you. Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of vehicles. I know there's thousands of planes, but in a case like this, mm -hmm. I know what I've seen from my own eyes. Mm -hmm. I know I was here, um, and I don't have to go around. You know, I was 
saying that I was here. Uh, again, we've never discussed this. Um, that's what I've seen from, from my own outlets. So to reverse that question, what's the percentage chance that the plane was actually on the south side of the station? Uh, zero chance. Is there less than zero <laughs> percent? Okay. Yeah. It's You know what, it's not a silly question because there's people that think they saw it there or are going to say they saw it there. Well, if you're, you know, three miles that way and you're on the other side of the station and you don't have a good judge of distance, maybe they thought they saw it over there. So, believe me, look, I thought I was parked there. I was parked 15, 20 feet different. Right, so... That's, so that's, I mean, 15 to 20 feet difference where I was parked has no bearing on that plane being over there. Has no bearing on it, well, so... unless my gas pump on my car was on the opposite side, but it was... Crown Victoria, it's the same make model. I mean, well, we, no we, we, we've got you on the Sitco security video yeah. on this side, so we know you were on this side. So it would be impossible for me to have seen through the building over the roof to see the plane. So you'd say from your vantage point here, um, it, it, it's 100% certain that. 100% that... certain that the plane was where I said it was. Okay. 0% chance it was anywhere else. 0% chance it was a missile. 0% chance it was a global hawk, which is a new one. No, um, no bomb that was thrown into the building. Yeah. Um, like I said, detonation versus deflagration. Yeah, there was an explosion, but it was not a detonation. It was a deflagration. And oh. all the ju junior scientists out there can figure that out. I've, I'm an explosive detection canine handler. I know about explosives. I've seen enough of them go off when we blow up our own training aids for tests and for demos. Um, it wasn't a detonation. It was a deflagration. Did either of you actually see the plane clip the light poles? So I just want to ask this question again to reiterate it. Like I said, you can't really see the light poles from yeah. here, so I didn't see it hit, see it hit them. But again, obviously it did because they were all knocked down. And again, <laughs> down what I stated uh, in my earlier interview was uh, the movement of the movement of the poles. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I never said it was knocked down, but uh, just the velocity and the angle of, of the plane really... Um, Trees. As you can see, these aren't dogwood or little uh, small, small trees. You here. saw the, the tree sway yes, from it. Okay. The, the very, very Did you feel it? No, I didn't. Okay. But but as far as the light poles, you didn't actually see them. I didn't. Get... I didn't see it. Okay. Great. This is this is this is perfect. This clears up a lot. I hope. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. As I was mentioning to Sergeant Legassi. The official story says the plane came on the south side, on the south side, and hit the light poles right here. No uh, chance. What's that? There's no chance. If, and as a matter of fact, I know for a fact that this light pole, well, you can't really see it, but there's a light pole here that was knocked down, and there was a light pole here that was knocked down. Not any over here. They were here. And there's no way the plane was over here. If anything, the only indisputable fact is the angle was different. That it was closer this way. Mm -hmm. But it had to be on the side. It had to be on the north side. It, there's no way it was on the south side. I can't see. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Right. It was, you know, the only thing that is even debatable here, and you look at Chad's next to mine, is the only thing that's debatable is maybe it was closer. Maybe it was further away, but it was on that side. None of these light poles over here were knocked down. They were here. None of these were knocked down. They were here. Let official say story says they were. What official story? The only official story would have been the Arlington County police report done after the event. There's no official story other than that. That's the after-action report that was written by Arlington County, the fire department and police agencies that responded, along with the United States Pentagon Police, at the time, Defense Protective Service. Mm -hmm. That's the official story. Anything else isn't official. It did not come on this way. I've never seen anything that said it was on the south side of that gas station, ever. Okay. Ever. Okay. I will... That's the only, you know, I'm, I'm trying to maintain an even strain here, but... These were the light poles. This is where the taxi cab was. Right here. Not over here. Nothing happened over here. Period. Okay. So I can't be any clearer about it. Great. Right. Thank you. 
In light of this quadruple corroborated testimony, it makes no sense to continue to suggest that the plane flew on the south side of the station. Therefore, it has been demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that the physical damage was staged and that the plane couldn't have really hit the building at all. The notion that all four witnesses are so completely incorrect about such a simple right or left detail during an event of this magnitude is simply not a viable consideration. Clearly all of the witnesses were convinced the plane hit the building, but we know if where they all placed the plane is remotely true that this cannot be what really happened. So how were they fooled? Naturally this question seems to be a difficult one to answer. But in light of this groundbreaking eyewitness testimony, it's necessary for us to hypothesize about how this operation of deception was carried out. It's important to note how all of these witnesses were aware of what had transpired in New York earlier that morning. At this point, both towers had been hit by planes, leaving no doubt that the nation was under deliberate attack. Because of this, many of the eyewitnesses to the plane in Arlington have claimed that they instantly knew what was happening when they saw a commercial airliner flying extremely low and fast over the area. Their minds were already conditioned to believe the plane would hit a building. With a low-flying jet airliner heading straight for the Pentagon, timed perfectly with a massive explosion, it stands to reason how people would instantly believe the plane hit the building, even though it really flew over the building. It was a classic sleight of hand illusion. If the plane flew through the fireball and over the building, there is no reason that anyone watching the explosion would think anything other than the plane it hit. So it's quite possible the plane could have slipped away unnoticed by anyone on the Arlington side who witnessed the explosion. There isn't much on the other side of the Pentagon until you cross the Potomac River into DC. According to the official NTSB flight path, the plane never flew over DC at all, so the people on the other side of the building would not have seen the plane approaching. They would have no clue as to what had just transpired. If they saw a plane flying away, it could have easily been confused with regular air traffic at a Reagan National Airport that is right next to the Pentagon. But even if they had questions about the plane they saw flying low over the Pentagon just after the explosion, there was a cover story. In the days following 9-11, there were news reports of witnesses seeing a second plane a few seconds later, chasing the airliner, passing over at a slightly different angle, and other accounts of it flying directly above the American Airlines jet, and as soon as it hit the building, the second plane veers off. Or reports of seeing a second jet in the skies, or one particular account we obtained on camera from USA Today editor Joel Sukerman of seeing another plane peeling off in the sky three to five seconds after the alleged American Airlines makes impact. You can see his account in the Pentagon Researcher's Edition. These reports of a second plane, or a second jet, subsequently turn into the official reports of a C-130 cargo plane that was called in to follow the passenger airliner. We know from interviews with the pilot himself, Steve O'Brien, and from various news reports that air traffic control requested that he follow and monitor the actions of the allegedly hijacked passenger airliner. They asked him to do this without telling him it had been hijacked. His account has now also been called into question due to the official release of the NTSB flight path study of American 77 five years later, which places the plane and the flight path nowhere near Washington, D.C., the mall, or the White House, which is what supported his account of first seeing the plane four miles away at 10 o'clock and in another account at 12 o'clock while he had a beautiful view of the mall while flying north and west after departing Andrews Air Force Base. This would make it incredibly difficult to turn around and follow the plane considering the new NTSB flight path. The other problem is that most witness accounts have the C-130 coming into the scene and passing over the area about 30 to 60 seconds after the explosion. And there are no witnesses that we interviewed further back on the flight path and close to the alleged impact that claimed the C-130 or second plane was shadowing the passenger jet or flew over the Pentagon within three seconds after the explosion, veering off and flying away. All three witnesses close to the impact site did not even see the C-130 when it passed by less than a minute later at a high altitude descent, passing by or through the minute-old smoke plume. Could the published accounts of a second plane so close to the American Airlines jet at the time of impact be planted fabrications for the purpose of blending the identity of the flyover jet with the C-130? 
This is certainly a possibility since the C-130 pilot himself does not claim to have shadowed the jet or to have witnessed the impact. See the researcher's edition for specific details, quotes, and news reports about the C-130. Another important detail covered in the researcher's edition is the fact that out of 13 presented eyewitnesses, only three perfectly described an American Airlines plane. We noticed a distinct difference between random neighborhood people whose accounts have never been published in the past as compared to witnesses that we spoke with whose accounts have been previously published. In fact, as many as five of them described the plane as white. Because of this, we do not believe the flyover plane had the exact characteristics of an American Airlines jet. We believe it was some sort of hybrid that may have had some American Airlines characteristics, but not entirely, so anyone who saw it fly over would confuse it with accounts of one of the other aircraft seen in the area, such as the C-130 or the E-4B. So now we know that all the questions about whether or not the plane hit the building were 100% valid, but many of the alternative hypotheses have been shown to be incorrect. There is no evidence in support of a missile, and the plane that flew low and fast over the area most definitely was a large twin-engine passenger jet airliner, as opposed to a smaller military drone. So what damaged the building and down the light poles? At this point, it is feasible to hypothesize that the damage to the building was accomplished with explosives that were strategically placed in an attempt to simulate the impact and damage from an aircraft. The downed light poles were likely planted hours before or the night before the event. Five light poles were downed, four out of the five were in inconspicuous areas, but one was located right on the road and allegedly speared the windshield of Lloyd England's taxi cab. Since we know the plane flew on the north side of the station and that it's impossible to have hit the light poles, this cannot be what transpired. There are many other questionable details surrounding the cab driver's account. This is primarily centered on the fact that the hood of his car remained untouched despite his claim that the over 30 foot long pole speared his windshield after being hit by a 757 traveling over 500 miles per hour. More details about the cab and interviews with the cab driver are featured in the researcher's edition. So where do we go from here? This is enough evidence to cast doubt on all of the circumstances surrounding 9-11. We aren't claiming to know all of the details about how this operation was pulled off, and we certainly aren't claiming to know what happened to the victims on Flight 77. But we do know for certain that the plane flew on the north side of the gas station, proving it cannot be what down the light poles and damaged the building. This means that we have been deliberately sold a lie and that a complex operation of worldwide deception was initiated on that day. There is no need for an investigation into if 9-11 was an inside job, but rather now an investigation into who the perpetrators really are. However much Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda were involved isn't such an important question anymore, as it is clear this operation had to be engineered from within. Citizen Investigation Team realizes how difficult it is to come to terms with such a heinous reality. We understand that the United States has a lot riding on this war on terror, but the carnage that has ensued as a result cannot be denied. Countless tens of thousands of dead and wounded since 2001. It is for them and for the countless more that will die in the future that we must not ignore the blatant lies surrounding the pretext that justifies it all.